Randy Vance. I'm at Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri and we're about to visit with three highway patrolmen who are responsible for patrolling Lake of the Ozarks and keeping boaters safe. One thing we learned is that alcohol is a pervading cause of accidents and injury on the lake and listen to how it not only affects boaters but the troopers responsible for keeping them safe. What people don't realize is the environment out here on the water in a boat is so different than the environment sitting at home in your lazy boy. The waves, the heat, the sun, the vibrations from the boat, the noise, all these factors takes a toll on your body and plays into how your body responds to the alcohol that, that you're consuming. It's a very big problem. Almost every injury or fatal crash we work involves one or both operators being intoxicated. I can't remember a serious injury two-boat collision or a fatal two-boat collision where alcohol wasn't involved. The very first summer that I came to the water and transferred over, I responded to the area, a uh, possible boat crash. I couldn't even locate the boat. Luckily, a neighbor had saw the boat go up on the shoreline up into the trees. It was just complete carnage. The boat was wrecked considerably. Subjects laying on the ground, pinned between the boat and trees. Several lives were altered and changed because of the decision the operator made to go out to a local establishment, have several drinks there, and then try to you know, navigate or operate his boat home. There's been several uh, boating while intoxicated arrests I make where I'm pretty sure that person would not have made it where they were going. Of all the arrests we make, people are over the legal limit obviously, but there's always a handful that you're, you're pretty sure you probably saved their life or the life of somebody else. Personally for me that you'll always get a ticket or get arrested for would be uh, boating while intoxicated on the highway or on the waters. If you're intoxicated or impaired otherwise, you're going to get arrested and probably go to jail. I mean you just have to look at the reason why we make an arrest. It's punitive, because you want to have a penalty for a wrong decision, bad behavior, or dangerous. And it's also preventative, because you, you want to stop that behavior in the future. There has to be a repercussion for your action, and unfortunately, sometimes money and fines and penalties and arrest is the only effective way. And, and that's why we're here, is to keep people safe. Even if you manage to remain accident free while boating under the influence, when you're busted, you're busted. The consequences are grave and boaters continually try to sneak out of it. I actually ended up arresting a guy for boating while intoxicated. While I'm pulling up with him, you know, I, I turned on a spotlight so I could identify who the driver was and I turn on my emergency lights. And while I'm doing that, I can see the operator swapped places with another passenger in the boat. I had a boat, the same situation, turn off my spotlight, you know, as they're turning around, and I hit my red lights, and all three of them dive into the cuddy, you know, hide, like you're five, hiding from a monster in your bed, just put, go into the sheets and they can't see you. We spend a lot of time talking about alcohol on the water, but that's not the only problem for BUI boaters. Prescription drugs and illicit narcotics are also a problem. Listen to how these water patrolmen have to handle those situations. People think of a boating while intoxicated arrest, they, they tend to associate that with alcohol um, because that is nine out of 10 arrests we make for BWI are alcohol related. Drugs can impair your ability to operate a boat just as much as alcohol and we look for that as well. Whether it be prescription or an illicit drug, if it impairs you to the point of intoxication, you can get arrested for boating while intoxicated. The narcotics are a lot harder to detect as far as the visual clues with the odor of alcohol. You really have to pay attention to all of your behavioral indicators and, um, and, and generally the officers that do those, the, the drug recognition experts that we have, will come down and do an evaluation to determine if they're under the influence. The main thing for me is trying to ensure everybody's safety. When I first started out, I always kept up with the cases. I always was checking case net to see what the penalty was that they got, if they got sentenced to jail or if they had uh, community service or what the fine was. And then after talking to several of their officers, uh, they pointed out like, yeah, they may have only gotten this penalty, but look at all the lives that you potentially saved while they were off the water. I want them to get the level of punishment it takes for them to think twice about doing it again. There have been times when I've gotten home and I thought, 
you know, did I take that too far? Initially, when you first come out of the academy, man, you want to save the world and you, you want to arrest everybody that is making a mistake. And then you realize the, the implications for what I do and how that affects people in their life. You start to see a bigger picture and you start to really understand the impact that we can have as officers on the water. We have an opportunity out here to interact with the general public in a way that's unique to any other law enforcement, interacting with any other person. We're interacting with them when their guards are down and our primary concern is their safety. And it's very unique to the water. It's a powerful tool that we have, just being side by side and having this conversation sometimes. Just our presence out there, how, how impactful that can be. As you can see, these three highway patrolmen have a mission, and that mission is to keep you safe. Do your part, stay sober on the water, and enjoy the lake.